Hey guys, I'm gonna talk about the best Shiva variation. Shiva is like Rain in that she doesn't really have a weak variation. All of her abilities are pretty much good, maybe except one, which is, you know, the shield mid thing. Not the projectile, but the ender down back two, I think it is. That one is just mediocre, but I'm gonna show you three variations. I think this one here is the best. That's the one that Foxy Grandpa plays, and that's a complete character. So Dragon Stance, it has that fire thing. It starts in 20 frames. But if you do it from the 1 to 2, back 1 to 2, it becomes uninterruptible because the cancel advantage is 18 and 20 frames startup means what? Means that this actual startup off of that string, off of this string, is actually 2 frames. Nothing can interrupt 2 frames at all, it's impossible. So on block, you can chip people away and if you aim down it becomes a mid, right? So lo look at all the chip that this other Shiva is taking here. That's a lot of chip! for blocking attack. So that's one of the reasons why it's strong. On hit, from the back 1-1, one, one, the dragon stance doesn't gel. But it does gel from the back too. That's all unbreakable damage. What you do essentially is unblock, so you do your back 1-2-2, two, two, okay? Do back 1-2-2, two, two, and when you see, oh, they're blocking, okay. So you start throwing this to get the chip from them when they're blocking. When they're not blocking, you're like, all right. And then you go into your death march. You pop them up from the uh, from the death march. So that's how these two go together. In terms of um, the Queen's Punishment, that's the low here. That's a mix-up. So this one has an amazing projectile, which is, you know, gives you chip on block. So that's for block, essentially. Unless you go, you open them up with this string, which it's unbreakable damage. So you have chip on block. You have uh, the stance, which has cancels. This is plus on block, duckable though. You can pop them up, so that's a launcher. And if they're ducking, you can squish their head. So you have the stance, a launcher, and then you have 50-50s. That's a complete character. Other than just, you know, the, her shit range. Other than like, this, this, and this. The rest has terrible range, but that's her only weakness. And th that's how you can mix, right? You mix with the back too. See how there's an overhead here? You can do this and special cancel into that one. There's no mix from the back one to two. I see a lot of people getting caught here by this. That's retard. Hmm, that's not good, I mean. <laughs> that's a mid at the end. There's no mix. This one is a mix. Because of the overhead, see? It ends in an overhead. Or you can special cancel to an NLO. It's unreactable. 15 frames compared to 22 frames. Technically fuzzyable based on frames, I think. But I doubt it, honestly. And the thing is, usually in variation 3, that's her mix-up, standard variation. Right, she has the Queen Punishment, and then she has the other one, which is uh, it grabs low ducking, blocking opponents. So that's like an extreme mix-up. But now that this is gone, the back forward 4 is free. You get your regular one, which is Untamed Fury, and this actually breaks armor. We've seen Foxy Grandpa do, do this to a whole bunch of people, right? So he gets them, pops them up, he grabs them, breaks armor. Then the damage is so high, so let's say we go and throw on breakaway. That was as fast as Shiva could break. And then what is the tech from here, the mind games? Well, you're like, alright, I'm not gonna break immediately, so this is what Foxy Grandpa does. And then he grabs you when you break right there. So let's say I use the other Shiva to demonstrate this. So usually what you do is you'll break here. But then you're scared that she's gonna grab you, so you're like, you know what, I'll wait to see if she does a combo. Then you break, so this is what happens. You break, and then she actually grabs you. So that's another mind game here. So then what happens is that you're stuck to just accept all this damage. And you're gonna bleed at the end. Because you're scared of breaking. Because you never know when you're gonna get grabbed. So anyways, that's the death march, it's really strong. The cancels are really nice too. That's, I think, the strongest Shiva variation. The one that I like, that's one I made even before I saw how good uh, Dragon Stance was. Like, I thought it was more of a meme thing, right? And by the way, with Dragon Stance, there are some techs from there on block. When you condition opponents to just block all this, what you can start doing is you throw your two and then you delay a little bit when it comes to the third, fourth, right? You do something like that. See, I delayed. The reason why is because eventually that's what you want to do. You want to cancel it. One, two, cancel. You see how I was in range for the back one? Okay. One, two. And I reach from back one. But I only reach if I'm down. 
So you know I reach, but let's say I aim up. I do the high. There's no reason to do this. It's duckable. I whiff. See, it's duckable. So you always want to use the mid. And there's a flawless block out, by the way. I so have to be really careful. Actually, if I put the AI on flawless block, you'll see here. So if I do this, go into my Shokan stance. See, they're all flawless blockable. Okay, well, Shiva sucks at her up three. But I think there's a punish. Uh, I think you can actually do it. Like, if you had Scarlet here for the flawless block. You would probably be able to reach, so just keep in mind there's a flawless block gap. It's not easy to flawless block, especially since you can delay it, right? And the delaying it is how you get away with it without getting flawless blocked. Okay, so my variation, the one that I like using is Shulkan Snag. Not only because it's an NTR, which by the way doesn't have a hurt box on his hand, I don't know if you knew that. Meaning if you kick the hand, right, if you kick the hand, see I'm getting my hand kicked. The kick comes out before my hand does. I'm not getting hurt. Because it has no hitbox. So it's it's great like that. It's a great... Um, I mean, it has no hitbox. It's a great hitbox for my Shiva. A great hitbox, and it has no hitbox. So, alright. That's what you want. So there's that. There's the anti-air. And it combos too, right? So if I... No, so now it's my head getting kicked off my hand. So... It combos an NTR that combos is nice, but also from the 2 1, this one, which has a sneaky overhead, put her on stance hold, it combos from that too, which usually you don't have anything else that combos from that, I don't think. Not that I recall, right? So you combo from here. So that's really, really nice to have. And that, sometimes you see Fox Grandpa online, uh, when he used to play V1 before customs came, he. Uh, what he does is he just YOLOs it sometimes, like that. 10 frames of start up and 29 of recovery. You might get away with it from time to time, honestly. Because the reason why you YOLO it is because you can't hit confirm off of one hit, right? You can't react to this and hit confirm. You can't be like, oh, the overhead touch, it's impossible. You need two hits. So since it's not hit confirmable, sometimes you just YOLO it. And what happens when you YOLO it and they block, if you're fast enough to block again, you should be fine. If you're fighting a high level player, you might get punished. Actually, I've seen uh, Foxy Grandpa do this exact thing to Video Games Yo, and Video Games Yo didn't even punish it. So it's actually pretty hard to react to. Especially since this arrives sometimes, right? You want to mix it. You want to mix this, this here, I mean, with this. Because then you're like, even if you block the second one, if sometimes he finishes with that one compared to this one, you're not going to be able to react to this one not touching you and then punishing in time. I don't think so. So that would be the tech. Sometimes you finish it on block, sometimes you YOLO that one. And it's always a YOLO, right? These two, even if this one on hit, if it touches the second one, it's a YOLO. The only time where it's not a YOLO is when the first one touches. If the first one touches, you can react. That's reactable. So if the first one touch, don't end it normally. If your first one touch, you Shogun snag it. But if he's ducking, you have to YOLO it. Absolutely you have to YOLO it. So either you have to do this, or you have to do this. And then I still have my Death March, which has all sorts of fun things that you can do with it, right? Including your launcher. There's another one too that I really like. She was the type of character that had three very good standard variations that you can still use today. I still use standard sometimes. So for example, now this is not a standard, this is customs, but I have the drag and drop. That moves like, you can't have just the drag and drop by itself. In my opinion, you always have to have the one that can direct because if they move back from here you're both fine and if he moves forward from here we're both fine but if he guesses wrong he gets stomped if i guess wrong we're both fine so this is how it works well for this ability unless of course it just stay put and then they can punish you but that's extremely rare and unlikely and they'll just do that just just do it normally okay so drag and drop to troll still have your mix-ups with queen's punishment and you have dragon charge Dragon Charge is a launcher. It's not the best launcher because you're stuck in the hit stun for a while. The timing is real tight to get the 4 3 if you want to go for optimals. Like, it's extremely tight. If you mash, it doesn't work. Fuck. Yeah. So you can do it like that, right? You pop them up like that. But unfortunately, with the Dragon Charge, since it's so. 
you're stuck in recovery for so long that it's better just to not do the forward one and to just go ahead and do the back one. Like that. Get less damage, but still good damage. So yeah, use the, the Dragon Charge as a launcher like you would use any other attack. Since it's a Dylan string, it's easier to drop, but anyways. So you do that, and the Dragon Charge, you use it on reversals, right? It is a reversal punish, it's 12 frames. That's really goddamn fast. Standard reversal punish, and it's a launcher. A launcher reversal punish, that's amazing. So that's something you would want to use against someone like Noob Saibot, for example. Or Melina. People who are really minus on block, but are usually like from here. They're, they're, they're like minus 17 from here. So you can't punish it normally, you're not even with the back one, but you need something that goes the distance, and that's when you would get your Dragon Charge, instead of the stance that launches. Because here you still launch and you have a reversal punish. Alright. You still got your mix up and then you have your dragon drop control. <laughs> so that's another fun one that I like. Alright guys, that's it for Shiva. She's an amazing character. She struggles in the neutral though, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie here. Frames are amazing. She's safe on almost everything. Have fun with it. Like and subscribe, peace.